Butterflies starting to fly down there at the gate. Walking through the pits earlier, we talked with the top four contenders. Oh, I'm concerned. We have five races left. I get right now is the the uh, you know the pending point. Usually it's before this, but since I've been you know I either win or not on the podium, so usually I'm more consistent than that. But I've been having bad luck every three three races that I've lost this year. I've been on the ground, so. If I stay up, I have a pretty good chance of winning, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, consistency helps, uh, you know, always at the end. The more points you can get, the better uh, each race. So, you know, all I need to do is just keep getting him behind me and, uh, you know, hopefully win the races while I'm doing it. And, and I hope he doesn't make the podium when he is behind me. So it helps a lot in points, and, uh, you know, we're getting closer, but, you know, not close enough. Yeah, I, I've kind of, you know, just kind of go with what the day is, you know. Don't, you know, may for a while we are concentrating so much on the bike and the setup and this and that and, and everything, and, and there was, like, so much going on with me during the races, you know, what tires, how the suspension's going and everything, and now I've kind of just concentrated, okay, I got two sets of tires. I'm going to run either set unless it's raining and you know would set up the bike we'll set up the bike right after the first practice and then that's it if we don't like that setup we'll go back to what we had to begin with and kind of minimize everything and uh, kind of take some of the uh, say stress off me and think about the track think about the race and stuff like that and I think that's what's helped me out the last few weeks I've been getting fourths and fifths and not seconds and thirds I uh, I'm still just as strong as anybody at the end of the race and I'm going just as fast as everybody out in practice today so tonight uh, maybe it's a turnaround point I might go from uh, two back of where I started to two in front of where I started. I set my goals at the beginning of the year of being in the top five, and after the first five races, I upped them to the top three for this series, and uh, I still think I can get Mike back. He's only ten points in front of me, and uh, that's not that big a gap. Also, David, they've been testing a new part, a 1995 part on his Nolene Yamaha machine, which has added a good deal of power. It was very noticeable in practice. Well, it's evident in Larry Ward's voice. He sounds a lot more confident than he's been in the past. He's going to need that here tonight. That's good to see after hitting the podium five times in the first five races and being off the podium now. A start underway. Emmy gets the whole shot. Henry Lampson averaging Ward Craig LaRocco all right there. Where's McGrath? McGrath in his about ninth or tenth position. Well, he was slick, though. As we look at our Honda jump cam, McGrath was almost dead last into the first corner. He snuck around the inside and came out pretty good. In true McGrath style, there's Emig number six. Number four is Henry. Five is Lampson putting on a charge. And look at this battle for the lead early on. The two Honda riders putting the pressure on Emick. Emick doing this big double over the plateau, looking really strong. He's got a different set of lines than everyone else, and already it looks like he's got a little bit of a lead now. You can't get too far away on this small track, though. That traffic was interesting. Look at the whoop section. Henry skipping through him. McGrath was buried at the start to begin with, David. Look how far back he is. He's dead last in the corner. He knows there's nowhere to go. So put on the brakes, cut to the inside. He does it perfect. Sucks up a banner in his wheel. That could have caused a lot of problems to spit it back out. But look at the places he made up by taking that inside line. Meanwhile, out front, Emig is being hassled by Henry and Lampson, a tight third. One of Lampson's best starts of the year. From the Honda Jump Cam, they're sailing by. And Emick nailing the whole shot lately. He's led a long ways in Houston and leading here again tonight. Appears to have everything under control. Usually a rider that kind of holds everybody up, but right now he's riding a fast pace. LaRocco getting by Ward, taking on Albertine. It was a good start for Albertine in his first race coming back from the injuries. But number two, LaRocco is on a dedicated charge to catch up with Lampson. Taking kind of a weird line way to the outside. Looks like it paid off as he uh, gets to the inside of... Greg Albertine and finally makes the pass stick, and here comes Larry Ward up the inside. Morocco and Ward headed for the whoops now as we look at the battle for the lead. Emig and Henry. Henry number four. Bar to bar on the triple. Henry a lot faster in the whoop section. Appears to be making up a lot of time. Takes the inside. Looks like he's got the lead. Oh! Henry goes down while in second place. That moves them all up. Morocco in the third. Ward in the fourth. What a bad break for Henry. When you go down early on like that on a track this tight, everybody goes by. Now he's way in the back of the pack, and it's a bummer coming out of that heat race. Emig with Lampson right on his tail. Take another look. Henry on the inside possibly hit his front brake lever on the elbow of Jeff Emig, locking that front wheel as slick as his track is. That sent him right to the deck. Emig taking a little bit of time coming out of that section, and Lampson was not hampered by Henry. He's picked up the gap, and look at Lampson. Lampson, this is his best Supercross of the year so far. 
And Emick looking strong everywhere but in the whoop section. That's where everyone's making up time. And I think Lampson senses if he can get around Emick, boy, he'd be a great buffer for everyone around. And possibly Lampson could get out to an early lead. We've got a tight group here as Lampson. He takes the lead from Emick. This is his first lead of the year. Can he hold back the Chargers? We'll find out after this. In Charlotte, 215 main event. Mike LaRocco making a charge out in front of Steve Lampson, but they're fairly tightly grouped right now. Look at uh, number six. That's Emmy. LaRocco to the inside. Jeremy McGrath and Larry Ward. A pack of four. McGrath now in sixth place. Well, he's come from pretty far off the pace. Saw how bad of a start he got. He's up in the thick of things. Right now, Emmick appears to be holding up the pace. A freight train of riders behind him, and Lampson's getting away. Larry Ward passes both LaRocco and Emick. Oh, he's got a battle on his hands, though. Here comes LaRocco, number two. McGrath is just waiting, watching for mistakes. Well, there's going to be a lot of them here tonight. I think you've got to be really smart on this racetrack. I mean, you've got to be aggressive, but you've got to be smart. And right now, Larry Ward is looking sharp. Emick trying not to give up that fifth position to Jeremy. Lampson out in front, but it's Larry Ward and Mike LaRocco battling for second place. Don't rule out number one. Jeremy McGrath is just behind them right now. Ward in second place. Earlier, Marty Reed went looking for some of Ward's secrets. Larry Ward is one of the tallest riders on the series. He stands 6'3", and earlier this year, he was having a heck of a time keeping his butt on the seat. Now, they tried glue, but that made it too sticky. So what they've come up with, and it's ingenious, really, when you think about it, is untreated rubber. And if you put your hand on this, you can see, I mean, it has some definite traction to it. It's similar to what you'd find if you were at a drag strip or a racetrack where a lot of rubber had been laid down, and it's hot and it's tacky. It gives new meaning to the phrase, get a grip on it. Right now, Ward's got a pretty good grip on second place, but nothing is sured on this track. Emig has got a battle on his hands now with Jeremy McGrath. He makes the move. Nice block inside. Makes an easy pass. Well, it's easy, and Jeff Emig is really slowing up the pace. He's riding so defensive right there. It's pretty easy for McGrath to make that move. Now McGrath into fourth spot, and pretty clever, and not far out of touch with the leaders right now. Let's get on to Marty. I see on the sign you keep telling him to breathe and relax. I'll tell you, it looks like it's a holy terror out there. It looks like there's only one line. Yeah, but if he stays focused and does just that, breathe and relax, he'll do real good. Here he comes right by us again. He's in the lead by a good four to five bike lane. In fact, it looks like everybody is fighting behind him, which is going to let him get a bigger lead. Yeah, as long as he rides smooth and lets these guys bang bars behind him, I think he'll do real good tonight. Good luck. Thanks. Lampson, number five, still in the lead with number 11, Larry Ward, right there. Ward made a little mistake about a lap ago. Let's go down and listen to Clint Berry, his mechanic. He's with Marty Reed. Clint, I just saw you give him a sign saying it's yours. He's in second place. You're that confident he can take him? Yeah, I really think he can. You know, the last three weeks, things haven't gone our way, but we're really working on it, and I really hope we can hang in there. You know, we just keep, keep on Lampson. He's got it closed down to about three bike lengths. What's been the difference? Because there's that stretch here recently where he couldn't find anything better than fifth. Well, basically, we had a few bike problems. We've been working on it, getting it all working better. He's really happy. Let's hope we can do it. Good luck. Thank you. But right now, with Lampson, Ward, LaRocco, and McGrath, it's anybody's race. Anybody's race. And right now, I think you got to look at the championship point standings. If McGrath can get up there and steal a win and hopefully get a couple of these guys between him and LaRocco, that sure looked good in the points. LaRocco still testing Ward for second place. Lampson with a pretty good little lead out in front. He's riding the best I've seen him ride all year. I, you know, it's sometimes you get buried in the pack, and he rides great, but you just don't have the results to show for it. And uh, right now, he's definitely got things going his way at LaRocco trying everything to get around Larry Ward. Ward just barely holding him off. Lap after lap, and now LaRocco has the corner he wanted. He's been working that outside line every lap, trying to make that pass, finally makes it stick, and guess who was watching? Jeremy McGrath. <laughs> yeah, Lampson, LaRocco, Ward, McGrath in that order, and boy, this points race could tighten even further with a LaRocco win, that's for sure. I guess the big question is, can the other riders hold McGrath off the podium? We'll be back in a moment. My name is Paul. Have you uh, heard about the Extreme Games? For the first time ever, nine same but different athletic contests 
we've never before brought together would be brought together here in small, scenic Rhode Island. Nine sports of the future up until June 24th. We have nothing to be scared of. Okay? Okay. We are back in Charlotte with all kinds of excitement. Lampson's out in the lead, but here's a battle for second, third, and fourth. Ward and Jeremy McGrath battling. Oh, LaRocca was slowed down. He must have hit that second triple very hard. He's holding his arm off the handlebar. Uh-oh. This is kind of like what happened at Pichon earlier in the day. He must have come up short and cased that and bent his wrist. Now, he's had lots of problems with wrists over the years, and uh, Pierce appears as though he's out for the race. Not only out for the race, though, this is a, a big damper. It puts him out of the points race as well. And it depends how serious it is. Could it mean some of the outdoor races? Well, I can tell you, Mike LaRocco is one of the toughest riders out there. You get a look at his dad, obviously very concerned. And, and Mike is uh, able to do quite a bit under a lot of pain. That's, I would think that's broken. Jeremy McGrath and Ward now in good position to make an attack on Lampson. And it'd be interesting to know what's going on inside of McGrath's head because by now he's got to know that LaRocco is out of the race and that's going to give him a huge points lead in this series. Boy, the pain must be shooting down that whole portion of the arm. Well, I can tell you, I've, I've injured wrists before and it, there's nothing quite like it. It hurts so bad and he's probably just doing whatever he's got to do to make that pain just go away. I don't think it's going to. And right now it's... There's got to be a million things going on inside of his mind. The championship's gone. The outdoors are coming up here in a couple of weeks. And is, is it broken? Is it not? What's, what's going to happen? LaRocco not finishing one of the motos in the first outdoor race at Gainesville, too. This would put him way behind. Well, it's just a heartbreaker for the guy. He's so talented and strong, and he never gives up, and he's just got all these problems to contend with. Lampson taking the lead over early in the race from Jeff Emick, still leading, but here comes number one, Jeremy McGrath. He's looking for his 27th career victory. Mike LaRocco walking back to the ambulance. That's his mother, May, to his right. They've got a, a field x-ray machine back at the ambulance, and uh, they'll be taking care of Mike LaRocco. A sad day for him. Jeff DeMent, number 77, is a lapper as number five as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch and see the interval. The lead that Lampson has on Jeremy McGrath, about 3.5 seconds. Ward in third place, Emig in fourth, number six. And look at number nine, the 125 rider out west, competes in the Eastern 250 circuit, Ryan Hughes. A nice job. Looking excellent. I'll bet he wishes he could ride the 250 every week. That's where he has the most success. Henry, after his crash early in the race, trying to catch up through the field for points. And Henry, I think if he can't be in the top three, I don't think he really cares. I, I know he deserves to be up there. He's a good enough rider. He had the fastest heat race. Looked like the fastest rider until he went down. It shouldn't be too long before he picks up his first main event win. Let's check out the Honda stopwatch now. The 125s made a lap in about 50 seconds, and we got 47.3 for the 250s. Yeah, the 250s aren't usually that much faster, but apparently uh, tonight, Lamson's got a pretty fast pace, and rightly so. He's got McGrath breathing down his neck. Well, especially on a tight track where your 125s lighter, easier to move around a little bit. LaRocco having that glove taken off the right wrist. Ooh, that's got, that's got to send a shock through your system. Yeah, you can see the pain on him, but really, I mean, most people, if they had a broken wrist right now, they'd be making a lot more faces than he does. He's a tough customer. Back on the track, it's Lampson out in front, but not far behind is Jeremy McGrath and Larry Ward. Lampson into the corner. Oh, a little bobble there. He's going to be disappointed time-wise. Marty's now with the Rocket. Mike, this is not the way we wanted to talk tonight. Take us through what happened out there. Well, I just moved into second, and, uh, you know, I landed a little hard off that triple, and I was tripling into the corner, and when I hit it, my front end dropped, and, you know, I nosed right into it, and my arms were bent all the way back, and when I came up, I think it broke my wrist. Have they given you any word on your wrist? Is it sprained, or is it worse? I think it's broke. How are you going? Tough luck, man. Well, that painful look on Mike's face pretty much says the story, but I think more so emotionally, it's going to be, it's got to be so tough because now there's no way he can win the Supercross title, and the national championship is in question. Incidentally, we've got confirmation that Pichon's injury was a sprained ligament to his right wrist. Back on the action now. Lampson out in front is really being tested by Jeremy McGrath. McGrath pretty much sizing him up right now. No mistakes for Lampson and the Wolves as he takes the corner. 